Hi, my name is Nick. This is my 93 GTR. I've had the car for about a year and a half now. Bought it, had a blown engine, typical Skyline thing. So I've been building it for about a, a year straight and finally been able to enjoy it this summer. I had an R32 GTST about three years ago and uh, built that car up. Had about 450 wheel. Uh, it was tons of fun, loved it. And then uh, I was looking for something more, a bit more power. Got into the GTR game, so I sold the GTS and right away just started building the motor just to make the 700 wheel and that was my goal. Today we're in a Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. different than the R34 we featured on the channel last month. Now it is lighter, obviously. This is kind of the first generation of what people would call Godzilla. It's got the RB26 under the hood. Now this one's different. Nick's put a uh, 63 millimeter turbo and it's cranking out 700 horsepower at the wheels. That's all wheel drive horsepower, so none of this wheel spin. It, I mean, it hooks up and it just goes. on pulling. <laughs> it just keeps on pulling. <laughs> That's the highest I've taken it so far. I believe so. I don't know. Somewhere between 6 and 7 I think. It revs all the way up to 8,000 RPM. And I mean that's what's really great about these uh, inline 6s that Nissan was making back in the 90s is they just rev to the moon. So when I was building the engine I knew I was going for a uh, 700 wheel. So I chose um, Manly rods, the H-beam, and then uh, CP pistons, Tomei camshafts, uh, Borg Warner, the 63 mil. I knew that would get me to the power levels I wanted. I actually set this car up to run on E85, but uh, I ended up switching last minute decision and just running uh, methanol injection. I guess I bought the car in like April of last year and uh, right away stripped the engine down, got it sent out to the machine shop and just started ordering parts basically right away. But uh, machine shop took about two months to get done. When I first bought my other Skyline, that's kind of where all the mechanics in me started to come out. I don't do it by trade, I just love it as a hobby. Just love working on cars and started picking it up and do a few things like easy stuff at first, spark plugs and oil changes and and then I started digging into turbo setups, uh, different injectors, maths. And then with this car, I just kind of went all out and assembled the whole engine, built the whole exhaust, intercooler piping, uh, basically assembled everything. By the time I worked out all the bugs, pulled the motor a few times, sort out everything. I think I had it on the dyno in uh, November, finally for the, the big power pulls. All right, so we're gonna see what the power feels like. We'll start from three. No, we'll start from 3,500. We'll mat it, see what it feels like. Let's go. Oh my God. And we're breaking every speed limit in the country. <laughs> now to back it off. I noticed this when I was looking at the footage actually. Um, I love what Nick's done with the speedometer because in uh, Japanese cars, they only go up to 180 kilometers an hour, right? Because, I mean, some of them are supposed to be limited, but he's basically drawn in 220 and then 240 kilometers an hour, and then it goes all the way past zero. So if you go all the way around back to zero kilometers an hour, you know you're going fucking fast. <laughs> That's basically the rule. I almost wish I had the opportunity to like enjoy this car in like factory form just to kind of see where it's come from. Like go from stock 300 horse all the way up to like 800 brake horse, whatever it is now. I think that would have been really cool to see like the, and feel the different, the different power levels. I'm definitely enjoying the 700 wheel. It's a lot of car to handle, it's fun. Honestly, it's so hard to put into words. I mean, just like having the car as loud as it is and 
with like the power, it's everything's just surreal. You kind of just get into this tunnel vision and you're just you're just basically all along for the ride at that point. <laughs> Plans I guess for this thing is to take it and track it next year and just get some more seat time and just really get to know the car and the all-wheel drive and start to push the limits of it. But that's the thing, I mean I'm always cruising around. People are always like trying to race me. It's funny, like you know, they'll be in stock cars and I can hear them accelerating past me. But I guess that's the attention that these skylines kind of draw. Um, I guess with the R32s, not the 33 or the 34, but you can wire in a, uh, a switch into the, the all-wheel drive electrical system basically, so it shuts it off. And then you're able to just do burnouts and drifts and spin the tires, have some fun. Best of both worlds, all-wheel drive hook on the track and then rear-wheel drive spinning, having fun. Got uh, T and coilovers. They just came with the car, but they seem to be in good shape, so I'm rocking them for now. And then the wheels, they're uh, 18 by 10s, and then 265s all around. Pretty much your typical GTR wheel sizing. It's got the full suspension arms in the rear, so I can really dial it in. Supra versus Skyline, hey? I don't know. They both are like astounding cars, and they both have their pros and cons. I guess if you're more into track and uh, you like circuit racing, obviously the Skyline is king in that area. But if you're going for a thousand wheel and you like doing rolling burnouts, then I mean the Supra is probably right up your alley. I mean owning these cars definitely comes at a cost. I've spent quite a bit of time working on it and getting it to where it is. My favorite Skyline, it's absolutely the R32. It's just more of a driver's car. I mean it's lighter than the rest of the Skyline Generations, and it's just the first big Skyline that really introduced the world to the racing scene of these things. I gotta stay true to the 32. See, for me, getting behind the wheel of this car, sure, I get to drive a few high horsepower cars every now and again, but... Every owner of a car like this I talk to says you get used to the power over time, which for a guy like me sounds completely ridiculous and really hard to believe. But considering almost every owner tells me that, I feel like, I mean, it has to be true, right? I don't know, for me it would take, I mean, this could never get old. Thanks guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, we'll see you next time with, um, we're trying to get some more domestics on the channel, obviously we're, We've got all the GTRs in the world on the channel right now. 
But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We will see you next time. So for those of you who are wondering what it's like driving a car on the, on the right-hand side in North America, to be honest, it's not really that different. I owned a JDM MR2 for a year and a half, and it was only really difficult for the first two to four days, I would say. After that, the only difficult things are turning left, obviously. Um, you just gotta wait for red um, most of the time, actually. Parallel parking, in my opinion, is a little bit easier, debatable. Um, but after you get used to it, it's not that difficult. And then obviously you get people giving you weird looks at lights and asking for photos and everything. And oh, where did they come from? Europe? No, it's, it's Japanese. I don't want to talk to you.